I'm Keith Howes and I was featured editor of London's Gay News from 1976 until 1979. I was brought into the paper, I think, to add a bit of stardust and glitter because it originally, of course, was a collective of um, gay liberation. Gay liberation never really taken off in England quite in the way it had in America and other countries. But it was also, the paper, very much linked with CHE, an organisation, it was the Campaign for Homosexual Equality, and CHE kind of regarded gay news, I think, as a little bit of, you know, its mouthpiece, but of course gay news was an independent newspaper, it wasn't really, it wasn't really speaking on behalf of any political party or any aspect of gay life other than its mantra, gay is good. But when I came, and I came, of course, from a very straight conventional magazine publishing uh, background, they thought, aha, you know, here's someone that's going to get the stars in. And to some extent, I did. I did get people to be interviewed. Why? Because their press agents realised that I was someone that would do a good interview. It wouldn't just be a gay news interview. It would be a top ranking interview where I would have done my homework, I would know what questions to ask, I'd be sensitive to certain things they didn't want discussed, but also I would ask questions about homosexuality, even if they weren't gay, I'd ask you know, what their attitudes were to people that they knew, maybe their children or whatever. And of course Dennis was always at great pains to tell me, get the gay angle love, get the gay angle, don't forget the gay angle. Because after all, if I hadn't have done the gay angle, it would have just been any other newspaper. But this was gay news. So as I said, I did impress the press agents. And once you pr impress the press agents, you're going to get their clients. And one client we got was Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart had just released an album called A Night on the Town. And there was a song on the album called The Killing of Georgie, which is about the death of a gay man. In these days of changing ways, so-called liberated days, a story comes to mind of a friend of mine. Georgie boy was gay, I guess, nothing more or nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. His mother's tears fell in vain the afternoon George tried to explain. That he needed love like all the rest Paul said there must be a mistake How can my son not be straight After all I've said and done for him It was released as a single So obviously there was a gay angle love with Rod Stewart And some would say there was a gay angle with Rod Stewart anyway because he'd been a member of the group The Small Faces where I think they used a bit of makeup and I think he was involved, professionally of course, with Long John Baldry who was an openly gay pop singer. Anyway, I said to you earlier that I was a very, very professional interviewer who always did his homework. That was true, except in the case of Rod Stewart. I didn't know anything about Rod Stewart. How could I not know anything about Rod Stewart? Well, I'd been out of the country during 1974 and a bit of 1975, and I think that's when he really began to be very, very popular. So I had missed out a bit on his career. So the morning before the interview, which took place at midday, I was listening to as many of his records as I could. So, because I'd never really heard him before. And this was very, very bad because, you know, I should have listened the week before and really got a sense of what he was talking about, the sort of themes he was interested in, and I didn't. So I was really dreading it, and actually I was dreading meeting Rod Stewart. Oh, God, I'd seen a bit about him in the paper, and he was going out with Britt Eklund, and he went to all these clubs, and he had all these cars, and he was all sleazy and horrible and rotten and ghastly, and he'd been a grave digger, and I was prejudiced, and I admit it. I met him and we fell instantly in love. It was beautiful. What a lovely, lovely man he is. Capricorn, so maybe because I've got a Capricorn moon that might have helped, I don't know. And Brit Eklund wasn't there, which might have helped. But sexy beyond all belief. No, that's not true. Sexual. I've never met anyone that touches himself 
all the time. He's constantly stroking himself. He is a sexual powerhouse. And as I said, you know, I, you know, if, if anyone goes with me, they uh, need to like to be well fucked because that's what they get. I found him intelligent, sensitive, funny, witty. It was a beautiful interview. I felt I'd known him for years. Just one of those strange coincidences where something you are not expecting to be very successful turns out Stands up trumps. Wonderful. And the interview, of course, sold quite a few papers, but more than that, it got the interest of the straight press, or rather the straight musical press, and it was reprinted in the new musical Express. So again, this upped the profile of gay news. Now, I heard later that, in fact, I was supposed to be appearing on a documentary about Rod Stewart. Originally, the interview was going to take place on a train and I was going to interview Rod Stewart on television from Gay News. And it was going to be Gay News' you know, first time that we'd been seen on television. And his girlfriend of the time said, oh no, you don't want to be associated with Gay News on television. That's not what you want. And so we didn't get on television, but we did get the interview. And what a lovely man he is, and he's had a continuously wonderful career. I love his Broadway albums. I think he's got a very strange and magical voice. I think he's a bit of a shaman, and he continues to delight the world, and he certainly delighted me. So, good on you, Rod. Now, having raved on about Rod Stewart, I must add as a postscript that, of course, Mr. Stewart wasn't perhaps entirely honest in the replies he gave me to whether he himself, of course, had had any homosexual experience. Um, he um, fudged it a little bit, but he was such a charming man and he'd written this lovely, lovely song about the death of his gay friend that I could hardly uh, be too stringent. I must say, these were very early days for me at Gay News. I gave a lot of these celebrities a lot of rope at the beginning. I allowed them basically to run the interview. Later on, I was a lot more stringent and I would make sure that they did answer the questions about something that was very important to me and I think important to a lot of people, particularly the readers of gay news. They did feel that their sexuality deserved as much prominence as other types of sexuality. And celebrities, and I'm not blaming Rod Stewart because I didn't ask the really curly questions, but he was perhaps an example um, of those pop singers who maybe in the past have, shall we say, experimented and enjoyed it, and later on have adapted to a very heterosexual lifestyle. But I may say that Mr. Elton John, who of course had come out as bisexual very bravely, I think, in the early 70s, and who I had interviewed for She Magazine, uh, much earlier than that, when he was just starting out, he did not uh, agree to be interviewed for Gay News. We never, ever interviewed Elton John, but we did interview Rod Stewart. He spoke of it, of course, in the most glowing terms because he knew so many gay people. His, his manager was gay, his, his, his press secretary was gay. He was surrounded by gay people. He was, shall we say, gay friendly. And as I said, a very sexual man highly um, sensual, Every, he loved beautiful things, he loved beautiful women. I'm sure he would like the occasional cuddle, shall we say. Um, but he didn't actually come out. But I did hear later that um, he did share a bed uh, in the past with Long John Baldry, which couldn't have been too comfortable because Long John Baldry was about six foot six. Rod Stewart was pretty tall, actually, as, as I remember. But, um, most interesting body Rod Stewart had. He was like a greyhound, um, extraordinary. And I put that down to the extraordinary amount of sex he had, or maybe that was playing tennis, I don't know. But um, a very vital human being and probably omnisexual, actually. <laughs>